Hello, y'all out there on YouTube. This is Rob from Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about small knives um, as a request from someone who was asking, what are your recommendations for knives for women? Um, but I think this would go for anybody who looks to carry a smaller knife, maybe something that you want to carry in a setting where you don't necessarily want to have a knife that could be intimidating or look you know, like a, an offensive weapon or where people are maybe a little more um, not used to seeing knives or maybe just you want to carry a small knife because you want something small and easy to conceal and carry that's out of the way and not bulky. Uh, maybe you're carrying a knife on your gym shorts or maybe you're carrying a small knife with your slacks, um, whatever. So that being said, I wanted to kind of go through some of the knives I have and maybe talk a little bit about some other knives as well and things that I would recommend for you to look into and maybe consider. Um, I have owned quite a few other knives as well that are not here and maybe I can talk about those as well. But hopefully this will be quick and it'll be something that's helpful and useful. So just to start off, the traditional one, the Swiss Army knife, which is a slip joint. And now this is extremely small, as you can see. I mean, heck, it's like a finger size right here. It's, you usually can tie it to a keychain or just slip it into your pocket. And it is considered what we call a, a slip joint. So here's a simple little blade, a slip joint, you know, very small blade on this one. Uh, in this particular case, it has a second blade, which is, well, not blade, it's a nail file. So that's really cool. And then in the back, this particular one has a cool little feature. It has clippers and I know for some people that is very handy to have something to clip off maybe a little string or what have you and then in this case of this file it also has tweezers so I mean that could be very useful for very something small concealed in EDC again um, it's going to lock in place pretty well with the uh, with the slip joint and uh, you got to use your nails go into this little nail groove here and it's a very small blade you're not going to use it for any hard use, right? Maybe open a box, open a letter. So, but that's that's definitely an option to consider. Another slip joint that I have is this one here by Real Steel. And this, um, as you can see, is a Real Steel. And I believe this one is D2. Uh, this is the Luna. Uh, this is JG10. Now, the nice thing about JG10 is you can dye these any color you want. You can make some really, really cool colors out there. So something to consider if you're wanting to do... Uh, maybe some modification, you know, uh, I think all you need is warm water and some dye. I haven't done it yet, but I, I really, maybe it's a future thing I'll try and give it a shot and see what happens. But uh, you can make different colors, you know, you could do purple and orange, whatever. But again, this is a slip joint. So if you notice, traditional slip joints stop right here. This particular Luna one stops at, I'm going to say it's around 110, 120 degrees, and then it folds all the way out. And you notice when you close them, you want to have your fingers out of the way because they do tend to pop shut, right? And this has a, a long fuller, which could be also a nail, nick, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, this one happens to have a clip. A lot of these, as you notice on this one, they don't have clips. Well, this one does, and so you could clip it into your pocket or your purse or, you know, your jacket. If you have a, a, a sports coat or something like that or just a regular jacket, maybe even a hoodie. But uh, again, this is pretty small. It's, you know, uh, I mean, for this one, you're gonna get a full grip. I think like, you know, I have medium large hands, large as far as thickness, but medium as far as length. So when I grab something, it's about a large hands grip right here. So this one, you get a full grip if, if that's what you're looking for. Smaller hands, you know, you might, be, you might be up a little further up here, but definitely, you know, probably about three inch, I'm gonna say it's a three inch, uh, let's see here, we have a little measuring right here. I'll tell you what it is. Uh, definitely under three inches. Yep. So definitely under three inches for the blade. So again, if you're in a place where three inches is an issue, that's that's a good one. All right. The next one, uh, I'll talk about these these at the end. These three up here because those are more expensive knives. And then I'll go through some of these here as well. The next one is the Lee by Kaiser, and this is in a little dirty. Sorry, because it's been used, right? So this N390 steel. I don't know if you can see that. This is what we call a sheep's foot blade. Right, it's got a little curve on the belly. It comes over like a Warncliffe, but because of the curve, it makes it a sheep foot. N690 is really good steel, very strong steel. It holds an edge pretty decently, you know, and it's called what we call a liner lock. And this has a liner in here, and there's a little relief right here so that you can put your finger here and push it to the side and then close it. 
So that's how a liner lock works. And then it has a flipper tab. So you could open it traditionally, like pulling it open. So if you're in a place where if doing that might freak somebody out, you know, you can just come in here and, and just kind of pull it open very gently. But it does flip open, which is nice for one-handed deployment. And once you get comfortable with something like this, you can close it one-handed. So it's a one-handed use knife. Also has a clip. This is what we call a deep carry clip. It's because it carries pretty deeply. So if you see maybe about that much of the knife would be sticking out, so you hardly can see that. So if you carry it in your pocket, it's pretty well concealed. Again, this one happens to be Jade G10 as well. It can be dyed different colors. So that's another option, a little small knife like that. I'll go over to this one next. This is the uh, Civivi Micro Elementum, okay? So this has a little um, loop like this as well that attaches here. I took it off because I kind of use this at my desk to cut, to open up different um, letters and what have you. This is a hand brushed carbon, uh, copper, and this is titanium on the backside here. And then it, this is also what we call a flipper, right? And it's liner lock as well. So I would flip it open like that. And the nice thing is this is a hollow grind. That means the blade curves in. That means it's very thin on the edge. So this is great for cutting envelopes and small boxes. Uh, I like to have that if I'm opening something here. You just, you just have to be careful where you put your fingers. So when you flip it open, but again, this is very small. So if you've got bigger hands like me, this one's difficult sometimes because I can put my hand over here and I'll hold down the liner lock and then it's hard to push. So I have to put my fingers down a little further so I can clip it, uh, flip it open. Right. So again, another small alternative, you can handle, you get to tie it to your keychain or what have you. And that's really nice. Um, there's different things like that. All right. So that's another option. Here we have what's called the Civivi Baby Banter. This is made by ba Ben Banters. If you know him over at Blade HQ, he did uh, a lot of their videos for a while. And he just came out with a new knife that I'll talk about next, uh, the Nafs Lander. But this is the micro, I mean, the uh, baby uh, banter. And again, deep carry clip, recess screws, so it's very easy to stick in your pocket. I love the little clip on here. Very easy to work with. It looks very small, so big hands you think, oh, can I carry this? Well, I like this one because what they have is called a finger choil right up here. So you see that finger choil? I could get my finger all the way up here like this and hold it with a full grip and still cut as I need to, like cut a box open, a letter, um, maybe cut a string off or what have you. This particular one is made out of Nitro V steel. I don't know if we can see that. There it is, yeah, Nitro V. I don't know if you can see, quite see that there. Uh, anyways, and this is again a liner lock. So you push it to the side and it drops shut. And very convenient, very small. I actually use this one as a fifth pocket knife, especially if I'm carrying a nicer knife and I don't want to worry if somebody wants to borrow a knife or I need to cut something, I don't wanna scratch the nice knife. So the nice knife I carry because I enjoy it and I'll cut letters and boxes, no problem. But sometimes, you know, you cut stuff that's going to probably scratch your knife that might have stuff in it that you want to be careful with. Or if you lend it to somebody, you don't want them to come out and take that nice and try to pry a staple or something off. And you're like, ah, oh, don't do that. Right. Because some people have no clue about stuff like that. Anyways, this is black G10. It comes in different colors. I think purple and some micarta and some different ones. So lots of options in something like this, right? Uh, I did want to say lots of options in something like this. These two, you can customize the, the Lieb has lots of options as well. So colors are a big thing. Great choice here. You can make your own colors out of these. These, I mean, there's a ton. Matter of fact, uh, I believe um, uh, there's even like a lot of custom ones that they make really cool designs with. This one is about the only one design they have in the Micro Elementum. They, the bigger versions of these, there's lots of options. So this next one is the Nafs Lander. This is again by Ben Banters. And it is, as you can see, oops, you can see I carry that and I have some strings still from my pants in there because I used to carry another knife that tore up my pants. And so I have some pants that are still torn from that particular knife I no longer have. It was the Chris Reeve Umuzam and it was, uh, um, um, bead blasted, not uh, not rock blasted or sand blasted, sorry. So it's very rough and it would rip up my jeans. So, but this is the Navs Lander. Again, very small knife. It flips open with what we call a thumb stud opening. That's what this is, thumb stud. This is a flipper. This right here is a slip joint. This is a flipper, but these are thumb stud opening, right? Again, it is a liner lock. So you push that and it drops closed like that. 
Uh, I show you this one because he actually has one that's not black, um, black um, I don't know if it's Cerakoted or just black washed, but it's a, uh, it's, you know, the regular color of steel. I would call it steel color, you know, it's plain, it's an un, unfinished. And uh, and that one also, he these scales, these scales swap out super easy with these two screws. And there's a ton of colors in this one. So this is one of these knives that I wanted to get in on his uh, Kickstarter project to support him because I really like Ben a lot. And uh, I think he does outstanding, he and his wife, just fantastic people and uh, love what they do and, their, and the, his attitude toward the knife community. He's done so much and got me into knives a lot with his videos, so I appreciate him. But uh, this right here, you know, is swappable. You can switch a lot of this hardware out. So I could buy all new screws from his site if I wanted them, um, you know, like the silver polish. And so I could have it stand out in this black. It could be black and silver, which I think could be a very cool color. Uh, you know, a non-blacked out deep carry clip. It could be, you know, the silver polish as well. And then the blade could be silver. So, but there's like pink scales, there's purple scales, there's white scales, there's blue scales, there's red scales, all sorts of stuff. So what I'm thinking is for this one, I may get the red scales and make this one of my Friday carries because on Friday I... You know, wear something red, um, and on Fridays, because my kids are in sports and football and band, I, I can't usually wear a red shirt because I always wear the high school shirt. Well, I was thinking I, what I do is I, I carry a knife that has something red in it. For instance, this one has something red in it. So this is one of my Friday knife carries right here, this little uh, uh, bug out um, by Benchmade. But if I could get red scales, I think this with red and black would look so sharp and it would be a great Friday carry. So for me, that's why I think I'm gonna keep this one around, but I may buy some more because they're for sale now. And it's $59 for the quality of knife you get here. This is a great buy. Like the, these, these two, really great buys. If you wanna be in the $59, $55 range right here, great, great knives to get. And the scales are like 20 bucks or 30 bucks. I think maybe 20, 25, I don't know. They're very cheap for G10 scales. Absolutely fantastic. And he open sourced this so other people will come out with scales. Sorry for hitting the camera there. Um, I can't wait till maybe he gets some carbon fiber ones. I would love that. Like this topo carbon fiber, I think on this, man, that would be sick. So anyways, another nice knife to carry. Small blade, if you notice, it is less than three inches. You can see over here, a little less than three inch blade for sure. So if that's a concern, but the action on this is fantastic. It's D2 steel. So it's inexpensive relatively. It's one of those knives you're not going to worry if you lose. So if you, you you know, for some of you guys, you may think 55, 60, that's a lot for a knife. Yes and no, right? You can spend $10, $15 on a knife, but you also get the safety and quality of a $10, $15 knife. Uh, here's a knife that um, my wife's best friend bought for her. Beautiful knife. I know she, she in the sense of she wanted to give her something that was pink, that she loves colors. And, and I think it was so sweet. Really great, great, great present. And she has a tool, uh, multi-tool, and, and I think, you know, Robin, she carries that all the time. Uh, but this right here, I think, is, is a great knife in the sense of the gift and the thought. But the problem with a cheaper knife is, if you see this liner lock right here, if I, you see how it opens? It doesn't lock. And that, to me, that's a safety. I'll do another video on knife safety because that, to me, is very concerning. And I told my wife, I really would like you not to carry this knife because I don't want her being in there, cut something, and then push down or hit it and then cut her finger. Because I've, I've heard stories where this went to the bone. Worst case, you fall with a knife like this, you cut off your finger. You literally could slice your fingers off if you hit the ground like that with this. That would be horrible, right? So great idea when you find a knife that's pretty, but you gotta make sure it's a quality knife. Keep yourself safe, okay? Just, that's what I really want. I, I don't wanna recommend a knife that I don't think is gonna be safe. This lockup, solid. See, it's gonna be really solid. That liner lock, really secure in there. And you know, it's a knife that I would feel safe with and safe in giving as a present or buying for someone I love, right? So now we're gonna go to a little higher end cheap knife. I, I, this is from Traditional Pocket Knives. This is a QSP, okay? Traditionally, they make these in the same price range. So you can get something like this with different colors, without, this is what we call jigged titanium scales. It's fancy, right? Really pretty, very aesthetically pleasing. It looks kind of fancy and it, it is for a QSP. Now, QSP makes great, inexpensive, affordable knives. Highly recommend them, right? But this is a, I call this my fanciest cheap knife. And, and it really is. Because not only that, it's M390, which is a super steel, right? And it's got a mill titanium clipped. I mean, so this is a 
almost a ridiculous knife for the price of what I paid. I think it was like 130. And just the action I love on this thing is so sweet. But again, this is what we call a, lo a not a liner lock. I mean, a, a, a frame lock. This is a frame lock, but it's not a liner lock. So the this part here that's on the frame actually bends in, catches the blade in the back, and locks it in place. And you release it by pushing. I don't know if you can see that. You release it by pushing that left, and then the blade releases. Right when it locks in place, it's right there. You can see it's indented, and that's what keeps it in secure in place. Right. And again, this right here is considered a thumb stud opening, not a flipper. I know they're coming out with a larger version of this with a flipper, but, and if you're, get really goofy in knives, I think I get, yeah, usually if I'm, I'm, yeah, I can flick it open with my finger on the side here too. That's an advanced technique, you know, for those who love flip, flipping their knives a lot, practice it. If you want to do it, it's a lot of fun, I think. But anyways, I can reverse flick this, I can forward flick this, and you can left hand flick this, right? All sorts of stuff. It's just a really nice little fidgety knife, but a great knife for the price, right? But they, like this, like I said, this is 130. You can get some for 50, 60, or 100 if you want a little higher end without the fancy jig titanium. Could be, you know, 154 CM steel or different types of steel, cheaper steels. But if you're looking for an inexpensive first knife, this is also another one. It's very small, compact, and this may seem big, but it really is a small knife, relatively speaking, because there's some very large knives out there, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go over to some of these. These are a little more expensive, and they're nicer knives, but if, if you're okay with, if you have the budget for it, something to consider here, okay? Uh, this first one is the Enrique Pena Trapper. Uh, so it's in, uh, Enrique Tra Pena is the designer, and it's a front flipper, and it looks like a traditional slip joint. You'll see it has a little nail nick, so you could open it like a slip joint, but this is a frame lock but it's behind these micarta inserts. So what this is called a bolster lock because it's hidden. And what that means is that you're not gonna have accidentally pushed down on this when you're trying to open it, right? So it's not gonna lock in place because what that does, there's, there's actually a little ball, if you can see it in there, it's right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, a little detent ball, right? And that is what, you know, um, when you release the frame lock and it comes down and you feel that little click, let's see, See how it clicks right there? That little ball goes into a little hole on the blade and it holds it in place so it doesn't fall out. And that's called a detent. And you pass it, you go over it, and then it locks in place like that. And that, it's a ball because this is touching against the blade and it's kind of rolling that ball over the blade so it's not scratching the blade and pushing resistance. It makes opening and closing easy, right? So like when I open this, I can push that and it drops down. Now, when you first do that, I wouldn't recommend that unless you know how to put your finger right here and catch it. Notice I catch the blade right there on my finger. I don't let this blade hit my hand or my nail or my, so I get cuts. You don't wanna do that first time, right? But I like this, cause you can flip it like that. And then you can even flip it like, let's see if I can, yep, flip it like that, right? So that's a lot of fun. It's a small knife, relatively small. It's a small blade, again, goes under that three inch, just under, yeah, definitely under three inches for sure. Um, and it's a flat grind and it's pretty sharp. It works really well. This is M390 steel, so it's a, it's a super steel, it's expensive. And uh, uh, this is a titanium frame with micarta. So you can get different colors and versions of this. I think they even had a carbon fiber once and may re-release re that, but a mill titanium clip. So you can carry and notice this one's gonna stick out a little bit, but because it's got that kind of a nice look, that very businessy look, it could be a nice knife to carry in your purse or your, or in your suit or your pants or your slacks, whatever, your briefcase, whatever. You know, this is a nice little knife to have if you need something to open, you know, envelopes, letters, whatever. Just has a real nice look to it, right? So another consideration. Um, I'll go to this one and next and I'll talk about that one last. This is the Benchmade Bug Out. Now this is a aluminum scaled version in the M390, another super steel. They sell a, a less expensive version that's a G10 right g10 on there and um it's um uh, like usually s uh, s30v steel which is a good steel it's a it's a premium steel it's not a super steel right it's a premium steel but m390 is considered a super steel you know higher edge retention uh stronger steel uh, more corrosion resistance you pay a little extra for the nicer steels right you get a really cheap knife you get cheaper steels right that's typically how that works not always but that's typically how that works has a deep carry clip as well Aluminum scale, so this makes it relatively light. Uh, the G10, or um, 
they have an elite G10. It's kind of like another version of G10 that they do as well. That's really nice too, and it's even lighter than this. But this is an access lock. And so thumb stud opening, but you pull these down and it's held there by a, a spring and it closes like that. So right, there you go. And it closes down and up like that. This is the locking mechanism. You can see when I come out, it releases to go over that and it locks in place. Now it's not gonna come down unless I pull this back. And then this will come all the way back. And then there's another little part of the blade it catches and it locks it in place so it doesn't fall out. But small knife, light knife, easy to carry. Another possibility. And you know what? They make a mini version of this that's even smaller than this. And that is something to consider. The design is very smart and it's a great design, very popular knife, super popular in the industry right now. So maybe something to consider as a, a little mini bug out. All right, now this one. This is an EMP by EDC um, pre-order that I got. So these are things that you're not typically, typically, typically gonna find you know, at the stores, but you can pre-order these and he does release these regularly. But I like this one, again, it's small. This is the, what they call the liner lock version. He had a lot of frame locks, but this is multi opening ways. And the blade is relatively small. It has that finger choil where you can hold it really close for those small cuts, boxes. If you're trying to open something, you know, in the office or, you know, you're, you know, I mean, I guess if, if you're a hard worker, it could be that too, but, and this has what we call the topo carbon fiber. And you can change the scales on this and it's just beautiful. Deep carry clip. This one will fit in your pants and it'll be about that much sticking out. So it's pretty deep. Titanium milled. And this right here is M390 steel as well, right? So that's really nice. And it, it is a liner lock, you can see that. And this is inside the, the scales. So, and this has three ways of deploy. You do a, a, a finger, a flipper. Now the flipper is not sticking out, it's more square. So you pull down like that. And it has what's called a front flipper. You put your fingers over in this front part and you can flip it open, right? And then you have these, these choils here where you can do the thumb here on this side, and then you can do it on the other side with a reverse flick. They call it a spidey flick sometimes because Spiderco kind of came up with their little holes in their knife. And they kind of the first invented, I guess, the idea of the spidey flick. It's just a reverse flick, reverse flick opening. But again, small knife, pretty comp uh, compact. Now this one's a little thicker because it does have the scales, you know? So if that's an issue, then maybe you want to th think of something a little thinner. But again, I like this as a small carry. It's indiscreet, it's, it's, um, it looks very nice. I mean, if you're in a business setting, this wouldn't look out of place or like a work tool or something. So again, that's a nice small knife. So now I was gonna talk about this one over here. Now this is a knife that my wife and her sister found when they were walking in the park, or no, her best friend, they were walking in the park. And this particular knife right here is a, um, it's a Gerber. And I don't think they make these anymore. Um, I believe this is called, uh, I don't even remember the name. I looked it up somewhere. But my, the reason why I brought it out is only because this is another type of locking mechanism. I don't have an example of right now. I'm looking to get the Kaiser version of this. I had a Protec Malibu. That's a little more expensive knife, but it's called a button lock. And so what that means is when you release it, you press this button right here and you can see it sticks out. If I press it, it drops. Now this is not like the full button locks like the other one because there's more resistance right here. It's considered assisted button lock, right? So it, but it does release by just a press and then you have to push this one in. The other button locks, when you press the button like this, it falls all the way down and closes. And so then it locks in place like that. So that's a full button lock. But that's another type of knife that you could definitely consider. It's easy to deploy. So if you have any thumb issues or what have you, uh, I wouldn't necessarily get maybe this thumb stud one. They do have thumb studs and they're much easier to open, but there's also flipper versions of those button locks. So you can just flipper it with a finger. So that's pretty nice. But the benefit of that is the way it, you close it. You just press a button and it releases and then you can close it. So those are button locks that I would recommend, smaller knives. Some of them are kind of big, some of them are okay as far as compactness, but definitely a knife worth considering with a button lock. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this one. Um, this is gonna be one of those knives that I'm not gonna recommend, but I wanted to show you for, this is my only example of a real button lock that I have here until I can get that Kaiser in. But um, that right there is um, what you, um, you could consider for another type of close and open. But these are small knives that you might want to consider. I talk, talked about the mini bug out, talked about QSP, there's some other versions of this. Um, there, the NAVS is a great one. 
And there's a bunch of other really nice small knives. Uh, the Lieb is great. All the Swiss Army knives are really nice. Uh, Civivi has a ton of small knives that you could consider. Uh, Civivi is one of those companies, yes, it is Japanese, but it's they make a decent, good knife that's reliable. And I really think it's worth spending the you know, 40, 50 bucks on a knife that's gonna be safe to use. You don't wanna mess around with that and cut yourself because the knife fails you. You don't want a knife that fails you. You want a knife that you can reliably use and you can reliably open and close and know that it's gonna lock in place. So like, even if I open this and I don't get it here and I push this, it still locks in. It's locked in. I'm not gonna worry that I leave it here. So I'll see if I can try to pretend it doesn't lock. Let's say I open it here and it didn't lock and it moves. But this one, once I get there, it locks in place every time. It's a, it's a reliable knife. You know, you want a knife that you can use and feel safe with and you could let other people use know they're not gonna get injured and that you could leave in your pant pocket, your sports coat, your purse, your briefcase, wherever that you might wanna keep a knife that you need to open boxes with. Um, but these are some of the ones I recommend. I know I'm looking for a knife for my sister-in-law to give her as a gift because I tend to give knives as gifts. So I'm trying to find her one that I would feel safe about. I found one that she liked in design, but I got to hold it this weekend and I was not too happy about it. It wasn't a super, super safe knife. So um, those are things that you want to keep in mind when you do that. Well, hey, I hope this was a fun video and helped you out a little bit and consider some knives. If you have any questions, um, feel free to post them in the comments. Um, and if you happen to like this content, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I'd really appreciate that. And then maybe hit the like button. That really helps me to know that this is good content that you'd like to see more of. And also feel free to check me out over at uh, Instagram on Rob's underscore nerdy underscore knives. Um, love to see you over there as well. But thanks again for watching and y'all have a great day and a great week. Bye.